Alex, we're back. We, back again. We had our first episode last time. Thank you so much to anyone that listened to that. We're really working on it. We have a lot going on, moving, shaking, getting everything back. Episode in two. Order. Episode two is here. Ah, it's so cool to say. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's here for you guys. We made more. We're here again talking about everything that we don't know about but we think is super interesting. So this is the sense. This is what we do. Uh, I'm Krista. I'm nope. not Krista. You are oh, Alex. I was reading the paper. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's, so we have a paper with our little outline of what Papers we're supposed to be doing. This time. Eventually, we'll get it down so we don't need a literal play-by-play of what we need to talk about. But, you know, for now, I'm Krista. And I'm Alex. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming. <laughs> this is The Sense. So, how are you? I'm good. It's Monday. I, I'm on my lunch break. And it was, it was a good weekend in Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> Walla Walla! <laughs> Did some wine tasting. Checked it out. It was a pretty cute little town. Walla's, Walla Walla is great. Everyone should visit sometime. It oh, yeah. has this adorable little store called Hot Poop. <laughs> <laughs> and and it like is this cute wooden sign and it says, like, Hot Poop. Poop. Like, like you're like oh oh wait what did, did I read that right <laughs> right like it's just it's kind of a juxtaposition of cuteness and kind of crass toilet humor together in one adorable place check but it out walla okay. walla yeah go for it how was your weekend Krista I worked but it's okay I pretty much work every weekend and I feel like I work a lot but I really don't I only work for eight hours a day and then I go home and play video games so <laughs> that's what I've been doing um. I think we should talk about our goals of last, maybe, what we were supposed to do. Because I only did it twice. We need to write down our goals because I kind of forgot what your goal was. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. I Tell was me supposed again. to get up early and walk my dog. And you only did it twice? I only did it twice. That's pretty good. I've been getting up earlier um, instead of, I think, sleeping into 10 a.m. Sorry. 10 a.m. is kind of late, at least for bit. most people. So I need to get out of that. But it's because I work in the afternoon. So it's... That makes it harder. It, do, it is. It is harder. Your schedule is like not normal human. It's not <laughs> normal human. Uh, eventually we'll be a normal human again. But your goal. My goal was I was going to do henna for my friend. My first like chess piece. Mm-hmm. Sadly, we had to reschedule. So... Wah, wah. But <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, we rescheduled. So it will happen. Which is still so, pretty I mean, amazing. We're halfway there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have some things to bring up about the last episode. I have a correction, and I have some listener feedback Ooh, as well. Tell me. My, our first email. Was, <laughs> <laughs> it was sent to us by my sister, which is fine. <laughs> it was funny because you were like texting me. You're like, oh my gosh, we got an email. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And you're like... From my sister. (laughs) She would be the first to do it. She jumped right on it. And her suggestion of a rhyme to uh, (laughs) remind yourself about snakes was just... And she's going to yell at me if I get this wrong. But don't be a fool. Snakes are cool. That's not the best advice. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I think think it's wrong. Is that what it said? I think that's what it said. Was I wrong? I think it was... Okay, I don't know. We'll uh, well, yeah, we'll bring it up next time. We'll have a correction <laughs> for the correction next Dang time. Uh, but yeah, so thank you, Miranda, to e- for emailing us. Go right ahead and do it again. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> Help us, Miranda. Yeah. You're on the <laughs> yeah. Oh, another correction is... Uh, remember when I spelled out our email so gracefully? Uh-oh, yeah. I spelled it wrong. No! Yeah. I'm awful at spelling, so I was like, yeah, go Krista. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, I tried really hard. When I ran into it, you know, I didn't even realize until, like, the 40th time I'd listened to it again <laughs> when, like, I was just editing, editing it, and I realized that I spelled it S-E-N-C-E. It's not how you spell sense. It's S-E-N-S-E. No C. I blame sensey. Oh, they I spelled them too. They spell it wrong. Yeah, because it's like scent, and again, that's what I think of. Tone. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, another correction I have: uh, a snake venom extracting kits we had from a listener, 
Aaron, thank you, uh, inform us that they are not recommended by many doctors. They uh, could be more dangerous and damaging than doing nothing. Snake venom bonds with the blood immediately. People are often surprised to learn just how fast blood moves through your entire body. This means once the venom is in, no matter how fast you break open the kit, the venom is already in the blood. It's not just sitting there. In theory, the suction won't do any good at that point, which is something basic testing on multiple occasion, occasions has seemed to confirm. They are helpful for insect stings, though. So if you mm. get, yeah, if you get stung by an insect, you could suction out the stinger. Yeah. Um, Thank goodness I didn't buy all those boxes of venom <laughs> extraction kits on Amazon. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Don't make Woo. an investment. You're gonna have to cancel those thirty boxes. Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah, don't don't make any investments in venom extracting kits. Uh, I might have put like the Sense podcast on. No, I'm kidding. How funny <laughs> like, it sent to us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. I mean, there's so we're bugs. really gonna like profit on these. <laughs> oh no. We need Anyways. to have official merchandise. So the first thing it's gonna be. <laughs> It's going to be a snake venom extracting kit. I want one so bad. No, it says the Sons podcast. We're doing it. Okay. Actually, that's happening. You can go so. to our store right after this. No. <laughs> it's not there yet. I'm going to make one, though. Which, speaking of making things, I'm learning how to edit the podcast, editing and music. Um, I'm only going to get better at it, so thanks for being patient with You're us. You're already like a million times better than me, so... <laughs> we were talking... Remember when we were talking yesterday? Or not yesterday. The last time we recorded when <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to edit this and put it all together and add music and upload it here. And you were like, I drew a picture. <laughs> <laughs> this is my picture. No. <laughs> Even that, which, I'm not done with it yet. Yeah. Gosh, which slacking. is... So the art you see that's for our little... It's like a title card. It says the sense on it. I whipped that up. It literally took no work at all. It really didn't. I kind of like it. It's cool, but we could do so much better. Oh, yeah. So we're going to make something better. It's going to be like original the artwork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the beginning of something great. Uh, so I'm learning to upload to the iTunes podcast library, which eventually I will get. So tune in for that. I'll let everyone know when it's available on iTunes because that's everyone's primary listening space. And if you have any suggestions of where we should upload our podcast to, please let us know. Email us. Email us. TheSenseCast at gmail.com. Okay. Our topic for today. Tell us, Krista, what is it? Oh my god. It's dragons. Yes! <laughs> it's gonna be fire! I love dragons! Dragons are so cool. And I was really excited for this because I was like, we need to get into the paranormal realm immediately. Because dragons, I mean, we did snakes last time. Those are for real. Those, I don't know if anyone knows this, but snakes do exist. (laughs) (laughs) Newsflash. Yeah. So I think, Alex, I think you should start. Okay, so I was, I didn't know where to go. There was so much to do with dragons. My first thought was Game of Thrones, but you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to touch that yet. (laughs) Not yet. Not yet. But I do love Mother of Dragons. Oh, absolutely. Um... What? Some of the stuff I read. There's dragons in every culture. Um, kind of European medieval ages, dragons were depicted as malevolent, fire-breathing monsters. And it was like, after Christianity, they kind of made them devilish and fire-breathing like hell. Um, whereas dragons in like Eastern culture... China, Japan, Vietnam are depicted as benevolent, smart water creatures. And they have like a protruding forehead for their, all their big, smart their brains. Big brains. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cute. And I looked up a couple of stories just to get an idea of the history. Bring it on. First one I looked up, which is also my favorite, is a dragon lady by the name of May Luzine. It's French. And... Um, there was a few different stories of her, but mostly French and from Luxembourg, late 1300s. And the story goes that she was proposed to by Raymond of Poitou. She agreed on the terms that he must never enter her chambers on Saturdays. Because Saturdays are for party. No, just kidding. <laughs> he, that was just her terms. Because she's sleeping. Um, yeah, but so then the story goes on, like, 
And I was like curious. I'm like, what's happening on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. He goes and he's also curious. He decides to be a creepy peeping Tom and he peeks on her while she's bathing on Saturday. Oh, no. And he sees that she's half dragon, like serpent dragon. So she's like woman on the top and then her legs like turn into this dragon. And he's like, what did Whoa. I marry? <laughs> so he is freaking out and goes to the, the court or not like immediately goes to the courts, but like when they're all sitting in court, like their court or whatever, mm -hmm. he tells the whole court, he's like, Hey, so I saw my wife bathing and she's a half dragon. Oh, dang. <laughs> like, why would you bring that up in front of everyone? And so just the How picture in my mind of her, like looking over at him, like, Can Oh you no, you did not <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so she, she, he called her out and she turns into a dragon right then and there and gives him two golden ring, magical rings and flies away forever. Never to come back. I love those kinds of stories, but they almost never make sense. No, it was really confusing. There was like, a, like I said, a few different like variations. Di yeah. Variations of the story. So I was kind of like, which one? There was also one where her mother was also half dragon and she had triplets and left, um, Mary made the same deal with her father and he walked in on her and so she turned into a dragon and also left. Very cool. Just all these dragons up and leaving. <laughs> well, they warned you. Yeah. Like, just don't. Don't mess with me on Saturday. Like, we'll get through it. It's one day a week. Just leave me alone. <laughs> like, I need some time. Yeah. <laughs> So that was cool. I just, I don't know. It made me want to draw this French maiden dragon. Oh, you should. I know. We'll put it up. We should start, like, our Instagram needs to be, like, your Ooh, art. Ooh, yeah. Stuff. I'm going to draw some pictures for the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to tell my other story, or do you want to have some stuff you want to go to? Um, you go ahead, because I think a lot of what you're talking about kind of ties into what I'm going to explain, so okay. go ahead. So the next story I have is from China. The, like I said, Chinese dragons... They weren't f feared, like, they're honored and, um... Revered. Revered. Sorry. It's okay. It's Monday, and my <laughs> mind's kind of spacey. And you've you've been at work already. Yeah. You've worked today already. This is just, this is her lunch break, actually. I've been, I was so excited to talk about dragons, and now here I am, like, sputtering, and I'm like, dang it. It's okay. So, the this story is really cute. It's about four dragon, Chinese dragons, and a lot of the dragons are more like water serpents but they also mm -hmm. fly through the clouds so these cute little dragons that's what i'm picturing i don't know if they actually were like cute little dragons. i think they're cute yeah they're playing in the water and they're like hey guys let's go up in the clouds and they're frolicking through the clouds and they go down low to go look on the people of china and they're the, these people are crying and starving and the dragons are like oh my goodness what's wrong like why are you so upset? Life is great. And they're like, we, we have no water. And the dragons start looking around and notice that all the rivers and all the lakes are dried up. And so what? they're like, well, let us go tell the Grand Emperor, which is like the main god. Um, I think it was the Jade Emperor. They, they tell the people, we'll be back. We'll go tell the Emperor to help you, to help you and we'll bring water. And the four dragons go, and the dragons are, there's the black dragon, yellow dragon, the long dragon, and the pearl dragon. And so they go to, before the emperor and they say, oh, our people are starving and thirsty. We need to give them water. And the emperor's like, yeah, 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 <laughs> whatever. Like, I'll, I'll get on that. And what so, a mean emperor. I know, <laughs> such a jerk. <laughs> and so dragons are just worrying and for 10 days and nothing happens. So they go back to the emperor and they're like, oh, um, so about that water. <laughs> and he was like, <clears throat> uh, oh, I've been having parties. I don't have time for that. And so the dragons left again, upset. And they were like, well, we're in the water all day. Why don't we just take some of this water and we'll go spray the water and make it rain for the all the Chinese people. And the Chinese people are so happy and they're like finally getting some rain. And the water god gets upset. He's like, why are these dragons taking all my water and giving it away for free? So he goes to the emperor and tells the, tells the emperor what the dragons are doing. 
The emperor freaks out and he's like, I told them I would fix this. <laughs> Are they not patient? If they just could have waited until I was done partying, <laughs> yeah. I would have got to it. He had so many parties. He didn't have to worry about water. Yeah. And so he calls the mountain god to trap the dragons in the mountains. And the dragons... They go and they trick the mountains and turn themselves into rivers and give up their lives for these Chinese people so that they won't, so they can water their crops and have waters for their family. And they turn into the four, four rivers in China and the black dragon turned into the Heilongji river. The yellow dragon turned into the Wong He I might be butchering these, so don't judge. <laughs> but you tried really hard. You even listened to the pronunciation. I watched some try. really weird pronunciation videos for this. But so. you did your absolute best, so Thanks. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the long dragon turned into the long river, the Changjian River, and the pearl dragon turned into the pearl river, the Jujang. And I just thought it was so cute because these adorable cute. dragons were just like. Oh, we're we're gonna turn ourselves into rivers for you guys, and they. So I understand like why the Chinese people love dragons so much. Like I want a dragon. Absolutely, they are so friendly and helpful in these stories. Yeah, and in that story in particular, and that's a hard juxtaposition to what you encounter in kind of like the classical medieval story of a dragon. So, and that was the yeah. final story I looked up was like Saint George. Um, that's, and and I started reading it. It's like the typical knight in shining armor. He, I don't have it written down on my pages, but I just kind of remembered the story. Mm -hmm. He came through into town and these, the people of the town were, there was a dragon and to appease the dragon, they gave him sheep and so they wouldn't, he wouldn't burn down the village. Yeah. They were like, here, eat the sheep, eat the sheep. And they Mm -hmm. ran out of sheep. So they're like. Well, now we're going to use kids. Like, oh no. What? <laughs> like, right out of sheep quickly. Yeah. Gosh. I'm really glad my parents didn't live there. No. <laughs> you would have been first to go. Yeah, like, oh, take no. this one. No. Yeah, so they were go- they're running through kids, out of sheep, running through kids. Finally, they get to the king's daughter. And they're like, yeah, let's put the princess. Like, I don't want to get oh, destroyed by this gosh. dragon. And St. George comes into town. He. Saves the princess, slays the dragon, and then, I don't know, it was all clicking in my head like, oh, this is like the typical fairy tale dragon story I've heard. He's a knight. Knight. Yep. I like those. I My favorite, I thought it was the French one, but now after reading and describing those the Chinese, Chinese dragons. dragons. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're so cute. Mm-hmm. I like the French one. It like I feel like it had been edited to make it. Like, maybe she won, you know? Maybe she was like, I'm There's a dragon definitely and- more to the story. Like, there's an actual book by um, Jean de Arez. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't read that whole book before we did the podcast. Yeah, so you don't have time for that. <laughs> look so- that up and let us know if you yeah. decide to read that book. And what are your favorite dragon stories, if you have any? Um, obviously, everyone knows about Game of Thrones and Love How to Dragons. Train a Dragon and all of the ones nowadays. So, historically, what do, you, what do you think about dragons? So, I have kind of, like, the opposite of what you were talking about. Um, Perfect. So, I thought about, in the broad sense, why we think about dragons. Scientific explanations for dragons. So, a common um, one, like, a common, like, idea that people think normally is that they are just dinosaurs. But dinosaurs and humans never coexisted. That might not be what each of you believe because there are a lot of different religious, um, like, you know, creationism. Like, a lot of people will believe that they did exist, which is fine. That's cool. So maybe that is an explanation to that. Make That makes sense to you. Uh, but scientists believe as fact that the last dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. And fossils of the earliest human ancestors are only six million years old. So that's many millions of yeah, years. That doesn't work out. Yeah. Now, I think that's interesting. You know, um, people believing that dragons are just dinosaurs. So that's one quick scientific explanation you can give yourself. If you want to think deeper about it, uh, dragons and dinosaurs are li- linked. The belief in dragons 
were not just based in legends, but also in hard evidence, or so it seemed. For a millennia, no one knew what to make of the giant bones that were occasionally unearthed around the globe, and dragons seemed a logical choice for people who had no knowledge of dinosaurs. So if you can imagine many people, um, you know, our ancestors before people started realizing what dinosaurs were would dig up bones and they would be giant dinosaur heads and say, hey, that's just a dead dragon. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I would think. I'd be like, what (laughs) is this? So that's another explanation of what that might be. Christian church created legends of righteous and godly saints battling and vanquishing Satan in the form of dragons. So that kind of, it gave themselves their own heroism to aspire more believers and followers to the church. The most celebrated one was St. George, the dragon slayer. He comes upon a town threatened by a terrible dragon. He rescues a fair maiden. He protects himself with the sign of the cross and he slays the beast. So the town citizen impressed, the town's citizens impressed by St. George immediately convert to Christianity. So it was a tool for them. They changed the dragons, like as you can see in the Chinese stories, they're friendly. They changed them and made them evil and an enemy to the church so that when they were slain and beaten, we have a hero that's a Christian that people will convert to Christianity. Fits right in. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally fit in there, but that's cool. You're a Christian? Yes, do it, man. (laughs) Be that way. Some people in ancient history were converted because of dragons. <laughs> That's just something <laughs> we have to realize. But... Why are you Christian? Dragons. Dragons. In case, in case there are dragons. Um, another great example of real dragons and a proven explanation are the Komodo dragons. Um, ooh, ooh, I was excited about I'm glad you're talking about this. Oh, yeah. A few centuries ago, rumors of dragons seem to have been confirmed by eyewitness accounts from sailors returning from Indonesia who reported encountering dragons. Or they, but they were Komodo dragons, a type of monitor lizard. So I guess monitor lizards are a whole type of lizard. I need to look into that. They can be aggressive, deadly, and reach up to 10 feet in length. Western scientists only verified the existence of Komodo dragons around 1910. But rumors and stories of fearsome beasts circulated long before that. So if you can imagine people coming back with tales of adventure from other countries and coming across giant lizards, those are dragons. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you really can't explain them any other way um, until scientists and naturalists discovered Komodo dragons as the species of monitor lizard. I forget the island that they live on. Komodo Island? I kind of feel like it is. Yeah, I think it is too. Um, so I ran into a myth, though, so that a lot of people believe, is that the saliva of a Komodo dragon is super poisonous. It's not. It's actually that's, not. Yeah, that's what I always thought. Like, grew up thinking, like, they bit you, and then it'd be, like, gangrene. Yeah. And, like, your leg falls off or something. Right. So the reason why people thought that is because Komodo dragons will kill something and then leave it for days, and it'll rot, and then they'll go back to it. So they thought that the rot was because of like its saliva. saliva. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not. That's just how they have to eat because they don't. Oh, I that'd guess be they so gross! It. Like I'm gonna bite into this chicken and eat it don't eat later. Like, yeah, oh. they kill it, let nature make it soft for them, and <laughs> they go this back to so it. So nasty. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Lunch. but really, I mean, Komodo dragons don't have poisonous saliva. That's a myth. They're just huge, scary lizards. They're just yeah, they're just regular scary things. <laughs> That aren't poisonous. They're just terrifying on their own without yeah. the <laughs> no killing poison. saliva. Exactly. So I wrote something that I really think sums up my ideas about dragons. Um, the prevalence and ubiquitous nature of dragons as myths and legends in every culture and spanning all recorded time is really where their power is unmatched. They certainly exist in our minds and hearts and continue to captivate us all. They burn down whole villages of fan bases. My favorite explanation is that dragons are an amalgam of all things we fear. We are still just naked animals trying to survive, and the idea of giant flying, fire-breathing lizards is the worst thing that can happen to us. (laughs) We vanquished our worst foe by capturing it in story and having our very own knight in shining armor slay it every time. Boom. Boom. That was a good Thank you. I wrote that. That A lot of this I got from LiveScience.com and it was like DiscoveryChannel.com or something like that. So 
I can put in some references in the show notes. When I figure out how to make show notes, which is another thing I have to figure <laughs> out. So those will be there. Yeah. But that last paragraph, that was on me. That was Krista <laughs> yeah, I wrote that. It's going to be famous. So, yeah, dragons. We're only up to 20 minutes. Wah, wah. <laughs> which is fine. What do you think about dragons? I loved all the stories. Um, there was also a Polish story that I read. Um, hold on, I have it right here. I didn't. Not the whole oh, story. Great. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you coming up from memory, <laughs> you don't like my memory? Oh, it's great. Kidding. No, I'm kidding. Um, is I'm not going to tell it now. I'm overthinking it. But if you look at Polish dragons, that was pretty cool too. Uh. I don't know. I like I said when I asked you about this topic, I was like, "What am I looking up here?" Like, yeah, we kind of had a hard time coming up with different things. I had this whole idea of trying to figure out the evolutionarily byproduct of what dragons might be, like why the way we you think explain of them. it, yeah, is so cool. And that's cool, but it's too complicated for me. It's a <laughs> it's a big topic. <laughs> so it's a little we could overwhelming. yeah, we could find dragon stories and read them to you all day. That's what we wanted to. My but, artistic brain went there. Like I was like, "Ooh, I could draw a really cool picture of this." And so that's what I like kept reading, and then I read different variations of the story. I was like, "Dang!" And then I was getting mm-hmm. down like wormholes, like the French. Oh yeah, yeah, the French dragon, uh, Melusine. She, I read a thing online that she's actually the inspiration for the mermaid on the Starbucks or Starbucks logo, the siren. Yeah. And so it also t- ties into that French dragon story. And so then I started reading about mermaids and then about more Starbucks stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get back to dragons. <laughs> Where am I going with this? This is kind of what happens when you research things you don't know about. It sends you on this whole spiral out of different topics. So sometimes it's hard to stay focused, but I hope we all inspired you to look up stories about dragons and you'll learn something new, whether it's about dragons or Starbucks. So, <laughs> dragons, <laughs> coffee, mermaid, man. no, I'm yeah, kidding. you know, it's all the same. I'll stay on topic better next time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you want to talk about goals? Yeah, Krista, tell me about what you want to do this week. So, like I said, I need to walk my dang dog. <laughs> That's gonna stay the goal. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'll have another one. But I, I took him to the dog park a lot, Ooh, uh, That's twice. Nice. Yeah, and. He has the most fun there because it's the best for me because I can just let him run free with other dogs and I get to look at my iPhone, look at my, look at Facebook. (laughs) Facebook it up. Yeah. While he's running free. Um, But he's great. And another goal I have is get ready for the transition festival in Eugene, Oregon. Oh my goodness. It's going to be so fun. When is it again? It's this weekend, the 22nd. Yeah. Sweet. And I have to put my outfits together. Like, oh yeah, so it's the 22nd and 23rd of September. Um, It's a EDM festival, so there's going to be tons of people there. And I am comfort orientated. So one of the things I'm going to wear is a Care Bear uh, onesie. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see <laughs> pictures. This is so amazing. It's going to be really cute and comfortable. And yeah, we're just going to listen to music and hang out and it's going to be the best. And I love Oregon. I love Eugene. Um, yeah. Love to go visit again soon. After the festival. Awesome. Good goals. Yeah. It's going to be a fun weekend. Yeah. Week. Yeah. Um, for this week, my goals... I'm going to practice rolling my henna cones, so I do henna on the side, and you take cellophane and roll cones up to put the henna in to it's, make your cool designs. The cone is what holds the my substance that makes the henna art. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to learn, and you roll them by hand. You can also use like a applicator, but... It's hard on your hands. So I'm going to learn how to roll these cones better. And also, on Saturday, I'm going to do a glow show festival. So it's Blacklight Party. And I'm going to do white henna 
and have it glow or in the black, black light. light on everybody. That is so cool. So I'm gonna practice up my designs this week so I can yeah get them perfected. <gasps> we should make some cards or something. Like what? Listen to our podcast. <gasps> <gasps> That's a really good idea. <laughs> the glow show. If you're at the Just glow show in Richmond, Washington. Yeah. Check us we'll out. We'll be on the podcast. So I have some future goals for the podcast. Oh, tell me. I want to bring up. So I want to do. Obviously, we're doing once a week. Uh, I think maybe like every four weeks, maybe we have a guest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have, we have a long list of guests we want to have. Um, if you're interested in being a guest, please ask us and we'll see what we can do. Cause I would love to have more people on. We'll interview you and decide. No, I'm kidding. It's, oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm it's pretty much a go. Yeah. Like, it's definitely a go. You like, want to be on the show? Come hang out. Yes. Yeah, like there, we don't have any controlled <laughs> content where there's, we I just we pictured us to inter- no one. Are you cool? Okay, yeah, you could be. Yeah, come, yeah that's come join it. us. No. Yeah, will you sit on a couch with us and talk about stuff we don't know? Great, come right up. This is what we do. <laughs> um, another goal. Um, let's see. The equipment we have is great. Eventually, we'll get better ones, but for now, for it's now, good. starting off. Yeah, it's starting off great. Um, another goal is get it out on iTunes, and that's it. I think that's it. I like where you're thinking. I like where your head's at. We're going to do it. And then Alex is going to make us new art. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's also part of my weekly goal. Mm-hmm. Or not mm-hmm. just this week's goal. Yeah. Soon goal. Soon. So if you have anything you want to let us know, uh, anything about dragons, maybe share with us your favorite dragon story or just give us a shout out. Say hi. You can see us or you can find us on Facebook, The Sense Cast. You can find us on Twitter, The SenseCast, and you can email us, thesensecast at gmail.com. And I'm not going to spell it this time because I messed up. You can, you'll figure it and out. Also, email us. Yeah. Or it's Facebook. Not, it's not hard to spell. So thank you very much. Everyone have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again soon. Till next week. Bye. Bye.